This video is made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. <laughs> Welcome back to Fast Gadgets, and thank you to those of you who were in my live stream tech talk yesterday. Really enjoyed it, had a good time. If you didn't get a chance to be there, you can always go back and check it out in my YouTube channel. The video will be available. So what we're going to talk about today is browsers, specifically Firefox browser. Firefox has been in the news for some rather questionable choices, at least from a privacy standpoint and it's not like it's egregious when you compare it to other browsers like Chrome or uh, Microsoft Edge but there's some a couple of things that have concerned me about Mozilla in general and the direction they're heading as far as management goes now there's a really good uh, video by Brian Lunduk where he talks about some of the issues with Firefox and he out and out pretty much condemns Firefox. I don't feel quite that strongly. I'm, I'm more of an average user and I think you know when you look at the browsers in general this particular browser is a little bit better but don't by any chance think that that Mozilla is a company that's suffering. They actually made over 500 million dollars last year and the company is doing very well now they have used some of that money to fund different initiatives and projects that some consider highly political and inflammatory so that's one reason why you might want to consider using a different browser another reason is that firefox has decided and this was a while back but it's uh definitely beginning to take shape you can see it when you create a new tab you would get your usual top sites and you would get some highlights of pages that you visited but what you would also get are some sponsored tiles and I have a problem with that and I don't know about you now this is the first time that I saw this I was kinda surprised here's Mozilla saying the future of the internet is at stake um, with threats to online privacy and security some of the threats to online privacy are coming from Mozilla. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. And Mozilla fights to save a healthy internet with advocacy work and software that enables the open web. As a not-for-profit, we rely on your support. So donate today. What I understand is that... Uh, there are a few tiers to the overall Mozilla structure. The topmost tier is the Mozilla Corporation. Then there is the, I believe it's called the Mozilla Project. It might be called the Firefox Project. I'm not really sure, but that part is not for profit. But the corporation is very much for profit and they're in the business of making money. Now, I don't want to get too political and, and try to convert you because it's really not something that's red hot in my opinion as far as browsers go. Firefox is still a really good browser if you value privacy, but there are those that have been concerned. So what's been happening? Well, one of the things we talked about, um, you're going to get ads in the browser. now. Mozilla is very careful in not calling them ads and this article is older but there was another article where they talked about it in uh, Firefox version 57 which is the newest version that they put out that's supposed to be much much faster personally I haven't seen that yet um, I think that version 57 is just as fast as the previous version in my opinion now, I, I haven't done any actual testing to see which one is, is faster or used any benchmark software. So this is purely subjective in, in coming from me. So uh, your mileage may vary and it also depends which machine you're running it on. Now, another issue that came up, and this was very recent, and 
This, of all things, upset me significantly enough to go look for a different browser. And what happened was Mozilla slipped a promo into Firefox, but here's the worst part. It was a compulsory, you had to see it, advertisement that was in the form of a plugin that was installed without your permission. Just think of that for a minute. So it's not so much a collection of data. Now they're actually sending data downstream to add a plugin into your browser so that an ad could appear on your system, on your browser. The problem with the ad was it was very confusing and many people got very concerned and received this very cryptic message. My reality is just different than yours. So there was a flurry of activity and one of the sites that was recording this activity was Reddit. And the concern was that people were thinking their system had been hacked and they were really, really concerned about it. They were freaked out. <laughs> I did not see it personally. I guess it only runs once. Um, so that right there to me was a huge thing and very concerning. So that prompted me to start thinking about a browser that doesn't have quite that much control. So um, I've heard talk about Waterfox. Now I don't know if any of you have heard of Waterfox. Basically what it is, you know that the Firefox browser was created using open source. So as a result, anybody can download that source code, alter it, and compile it and create binaries, or you can just grab the source code and compile it yourself. You can download it for Mac, you can download it for PC, you can download it for Linux, did I say PC? Windows, Linux, Mac. Some of the things that the developer has done for one thing, he, he was saying originally the developer when he made Waterfox, the whole concept was to actually be a faster browser than Firefox. But uh, really after a while, he decided that he wanted to ensure that he had a browser that was on a free and open web. But more than that, he wanted uh, Waterfox to be an ethical, user-oriented browser. And what he's saying here essentially is there's a series of features that can track your usage of the browser and send that information to Mozilla. And Mozilla in return could, and I'm not saying they are, I don't know that they are, but could, sell your information to third parties and at least um, non-personally identifying information in so in aggregate statistics uh, may ha already be being sold to other companies. Some of these features were encrypted media extensions, runtime, really not an issue anymore, telemetry and data collection. Um, so those things were a concern if you are worried about your personal data, your privacy, and to some extent your security. So I decided to download Waterfox and give it a try and see what was it was like. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not sure why it's saying download for a Mac. I'm definitely not on a Mac. I'm on Firefox right now. There we go. Download for Linux. I don't know why it was saying download for a Mac. It's supposed to be able to detect uh, which operating system you're on. Anyway, when you download the Linux version, you actually get a uh, tarball, which uh, for those of you who are not sure what a tarball is, it's a tape archive file that um, basically has been, it's a bunch of files inside a tape archive file, which was an older way of uh, collecting a bunch of files together in one big file and then they use uh, bzip2 to zip it up to compress it and make it really small so you can see that the total size here is 93 megabytes so what you do after you download it if you're on a Linux or BSD system is just use the tar command with the switch uh, switches X J V F and the name of the file microphone's in the way of my keyboard I can't see it too well 
and what it will do is extract the file. It will use the bzip decompressor to decompress the file, verify it, and then put it into a directory called waterfox. So it's just a binary. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead, let me get rid of this, and simply go into the waterfox directory that it created and I can run the binary here waterfox however what I did decide to do is create an icon now I'd like to point out you probably realized if I do a print working directory I actually have waterfox in my download directory I probably would move that to user bin or someplace else that way um, if other users wanted to they could use it when you first run waterfox it creates your profile information in your own home directory so your actual profile data where information is being saved that all ends up in your personal uh, waterfox profile directory in your home directory so you don't have to worry about other people seeing it but anyway I'm really just doing testing however uh, I have discovered that for the most part let me shrink it down here you'll notice that the tabs are the old curve style which I actually like now waterfox is based on version 56 and the author has actually been incorporating security fixes for version 57 into waterfox so that's a good thing but all of that telemetry uh, data collection all that stuff has been taken out now one thing he did leave in and I'm glad he did was sync so you see here it's got my email address I'm actually synced into the Firefox centralized service so again some of you may say whoa isn't that a huge security risk probably to some extent um, what it does is it synchronizes the plugins that you use, any add-ons that you use, some setting changes, but not all of them. And my favorite is your favorites. So no matter if you log on with Android or iPhone or MacBook or whatever has Firefox on it, it'll sync all that stuff for you, which I kind of like. Um, should you use it? that's solely up to you I have been using it I don't have any favorites in there that I'm concerned about anybody seeing so you know I guess it all depends think about what you want to do but anyway so it essentially looks almost identical because it really is it's the same code base but this particular browser of course is one version newer now let's go somewhere I'm going to go to a site that I haven't gone to and keeping in mind that the two profiles are completely different so the Firefox cache and all its stuff is different than Waterfox so let's go to time.com and just see how long it takes it to load I counted about three seconds so I'm going to cruise up here launch a new tab and we'll do the same thing I got the same thing about three seconds to three and a half seconds now I was just counting in my head I wasn't using an actual timer but this is only one site and it could mean the, you know nothing basically I mean you should try it with other sites and decide what you think but in general all that data collection mechanism that was baked into Firefox is not there and apparently there were I you know now I can't remember I think it was like 60 million downloads of Waterfox so this is not trivial people are using it I won't say extensively but quite a bit uh, back here on Firefox so we talked about slipping in a plug-in very very scary and we talked about Waterfox and do not donate uh, to Mozilla they made money hand over fist so they don't 
actually need your money. This just kind of scares me. All right, let's try one more site. Now there's a particular one that I know does take a while to load. Uh, this is CNET, basically. I'm not a big fan of CNET anymore, mainly because of how horrendous their site is. But let's load it and see how long it takes. About three seconds. And do I want CNET to send me notifications? No, I do not. So let's go up here and we'll do the same thing. News.com. It actually was much faster in Waterfox, and I can't say why necessarily. Now, there is some tools that are new for your privacy in Firefox that may have a mitigating factor, may have something to do with it. Um, so if you actually go and have a look at Firefox's privacy, they do talk to you about who they share data to and what types of data they're collecting. So you should have a look at this. They have some interaction data they collect as well as some technical data. Then they go into all the different categories so that you can see what they're doing with that data and how it's being collected. So I want to give you an example here. Let's look at location data, for example. So they collect your IP address to suggest relevant content. They know in general, fairly specifically, let's be honest, where you are, um, some technical data and interaction. And this stuff is saved on their servers for a while. They don't say how long. And my experience has been because this data is so trivial and storage just continues to expand even on servers they do store more and more data and are much less likely to delete it I've ran servers for um, large nonprofit organizations and with regard to logs I would rotate them but deletion it really wasn't that necessary so now I'm not saying all the logs but many of them and there are some stipulations, uh, there are certain laws in effect that require you to save some of that log data for a certain amount of time depending on the type of business you're doing. So they save technical and interaction data and some web page data for snippets. Now way up here at the top they say you can choose how you want to share this data in Firefox and if you click this link it actually is taking you to the same place as if you were to go here to preferences and then privacy and security <clears throat> and I actually went through everything here and depending how paranoid you are you could turn off history collection altogether or saving hi your history you could turn off suggestions but I want to show you the most important stuff and and this is with regard to Mozilla down here at the bottom, Firefox data collection in use. Um, if you turn off allow Firefox to send technical and interaction data to Mozilla, it will automatically turn off allow Firefox to install and run studies. And here's the thing, I can't guarantee this 100%, but uh, many users are saying if you turn off Firefox studies, it will turn off the ability to uh, place plugins or add-ons into your browser automatically like they did with the advertising. You probably want to turn that off, that's my suggestion. And I actually decided to turn tracking protection on always. It used to be only in private windows and I always send websites a do not track signal. That doesn't mean they're going to obey it. So again, do you have to worry? Uh, if you're going to keep using Firefox, I would just suggest uh, changing those Firefox data collection settings. It will help. Now I can't say, you know, start up and if any telemetry is being sent to Mozilla, it is possible that some is. But if you want to avoid that altogether, of course, you can just use Waterfox. 
What I'm going to do here in the future is install Waterfox on my Mac and Windows systems so that I can begin using it and do some comparisons. I'll also see if there's a version for Android, but I don't think there is. I think this is uh, strictly PCs and Macs right now. But something to think about. You always have to look into, you know, promoting your own privacy, um, making sure that your data isn't being collected when it doesn't need to be, unless it benefits you and you want it to be, and in general, your security. If we have a feature that can allow plugins to be installed, there is always the possibility that that feature could be hacked and plugins could be installed automatically without your consent. I say it's a possibility. It hasn't happened yet, but you never know. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you get a chance, go check out Brian Lunduk's video on Mozilla, the company, and, and their goals. Well, not their goals, but where they're headed and some of the things that they've done. It's much more political, of course. This I'm just talking about, you know, the technical uh, issues with privacy. So... Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe. I always appreciate it. Uh, like, and my favorite one is share. And drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.